So good afternoon everybody. This is B from Q Kitchen and Beyond. And I was sitting here watching my pot boil. I've been boiling vegetables all day long. Um, and I thought I'd bring you along. Now this is actually my third batch of vegetables. Um, what I'm doing is this is a lot of the stuff I got from the Misfits Market, and they do not stay uh, fresh very long. Plus, a lot of my stuff got frozen in my refrigerator, even though it's on the lowest setting. So, I'm not going to let a good veggie go to waste. So, I've got in this set here, I've got some of the outer leaves, just the outer leaves of the... Um, two red cabbage heads I had and I've got that's not kale oh that's my um oh goodness now I can't remember what it's called uh ha! anyways um I'm sure y'all know what this is <laughs> I can't remember at the moment I'm so sorry but uh this is actually my third batch of this rainbow chard chard that's what it is it's chard <laughs> um it had frozen in my refrigerator and I was so mad because I was gonna make little chard crisps out of it and then I had an incident with my dehydrator and uh, let's just say luckily I didn't have to call the fire department but now I need a new dehydrator I don't know what happened, but it started smoking, my friends. And I had a bunch of onions and garlic in there, and I don't know if one got down into the engine or what happened. Here, let me show you. Let me take my wooden spoon out of there first. This is just cilantro. Um, not a fan of cilantro. So, <laughs> I've already dehydrated a bunch of peppers and onions to make some dehydrated salsa. Um... But, like I said, I didn't get to do my cilantro because, yeah, we just won't go there. Um, now, I do have another small dehydrator that I have not pulled out of the box yet. Uh, it is my daughter's. Um, she was interested in learning how to can things and dehydrate things, which is great. Um, she's 12, so I was like, oh, yeah, we're <laughs> totally going to do this. Um, so I brought her a pressure canner and, um, a dehydrator. Well, we haven't used either one. Um, I haven't used the pressure canner yet because I have never pressure canned anything. So I'm waiting for my mom to be able to come and visit so she can show me how to do it without blowing up my apartment complex. Because I'm fairly certain, well, one, I'd be homeless. Um... But two, I'm fairly certain they wouldn't let me move into another uh, apartment complex if I did that. So, what I've done is I've taken the cilantro here, and it's dried out quite a bit up on the top. But, um, I let this boil. I've been letting the pans boil for 30 minutes. This one's been boiling for 30 minutes now. So, what I'm going to do, hopefully without steam burning myself. Because, yeah, my mom's a nurse. She would not appreciate me steam burning myself. I know better. Um, so what I'll do is let that cool off just a little bit. Come down to temperature because all our appliances here are electric. And I was brought up using gas. So um, it takes a really long time for this to, to mellow down. But once it does, um, actually I think it's... It should be alright to do it this way. Um, I'm using this plate to kind of dry them out. Um, I don't like to do my herbs in the dehydrator. I usually hang them upside down. See, these are already starting to dry out. Um, but for some reason, it's not working very well with the cilantro. It's kind of turning them brown where it was hung against the wall. So, I'm going to try and do it this way. And it is working on some of the stuff. is getting dry. But that's kind of gross. Um, I've already tasted one. And yeah, it, it still tastes like cilantro. So, 
obviously I guess that's a good thing if you like cilantro. This I'm just keeping because I'm going to drink the broth of all of these vegetables. I've already got two gallons. Yeah, two gallons. Um, actually, one's a two liter. I've got a two liter and a one gallon, and I'm working on my third gallon. My second one gallon, my third container. Oh, goodness. You'd think I haven't had a pot of coffee already this morning. Um, and I've taken my meds, so, you know, that's not it. Um, what I'm going to do with these is because they are a little browner, is I'm just going to give, rip these up really small and um, feed them to my worms and my worm containers. So I just promised somebody <laughs> in the comments that I would be showing um, the rest of my garden. So that's what we're going to do. But first we're going to stop off at the sink. This is actually, I take this back, that pan that you just saw boiling is my fourth, um, my fourth pan today. This right here is my third container. It's my second one gallon container. So I'm working on that. And what I do is I will put the, um, I don't put seasoning in them when I'm going to give them to the worms. And, um, I really, I really need to feed my worms because they're really hungry. Uh, and they won't make more babies if they're hungry. So, this is my bag of stuff I'm going to give the worms. Um, probably not all of that, but a fairly decent amount and whatever is left over I'll probably eat. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> There's my citrus that I need to get done today. The problem is I was going to dehydrate them and now I can't. So I got to figure out a different thing to do with them and Miss Mary over, um, I'll put her link down below. She has a way of doing marmalade. And I don't have to use my pressure canner, so that's a good thing. So that's probably what I'm going to end up doing with all of the citrus. Um, I washed it with some vinegar water, half vinegar and half water. And um, scrubbed them really good with my potato scrubber and let them dry. And then my dehydrator died. Yay! So, lovely. Um, there's my two heads of cabbage. I just took the outer leaves off. And, um, she also, Miss Mary, also has a way of doing red cabbage slaw. It's a ferment, and I know how to ferment. So, <laughs> stick with what you know until someone can teach you how to do something you don't. Um, so I'm going to use these two to make some red cabbage slaw. Alrighty then. So this is one of my vermicompost bins, and it's got things growing in it. I put the diatomaceous earth down to try and get rid of the fungus gnats, and it's not affecting the fungus gnats very much. Um, I think it's probably killing the babies, or I thought it was, and I just saw a little one flying around. This right here are bulbs that I had gotten from Walmart. I had one set of canna lilies, and these are not canna lilies. My mom grew canna lilies. These are not canna lilies. And the other was a firecracker dahlia, which is what I'm thinking this probably is. I had that light on, but it was really bright and you couldn't see, so I had to turn it off before I could turn on my recorder. But I've got two of them. Um, I just noticed they're starting to turn brown down there. I do have, I don't know what that is. I rescued it from one of my other containers. Um, this is my tree collard. And no, it's not going to stay in here, but I can't uproot it now because they don't like to be messed with. And I don't have a big place to put it. This is a Santa Fe pepper that Mr. Joe from Garden State Gardener sent me. It's one of the only ones I didn't kill. I think I have two more outside. These are my little um, traps. They're working really great. This is just, I just changed this vinegar out last night. 
So you see how bad the fungus gnat issue is. Um, now this is kind of a little experiment. Those little things down there are mosquito bits, not dino bites, um, which are a completely different creature that you eat. And they're not really creatures, they're just chicken, but, you know, we won't tell my kids that. Um, <laughs> this was my zinnias, but um, something happened, and the zinnias died, so I put the soil out of the container, um, got fresh soil, I put some diatomaceous earth down in there, um, and then I'm using hamster bedding as a mulch, and as you can see, the fungus gnats are not really going near this. Um, this powder on there is just diatomaceous earth that got a little crazy. Um, I may take these bottom leaves off. And wash them really good before I, you know, eat them. Wash them really good. Um, now this is food grade diatomaceous earth on in this pile. Um, the others are regular diatomaceous earth. I just, I had a little bag of diatomaceous earth left that was food grade that I used for some of my preps. So I put it on here. Um, because it's a collard and I want to eat it at some point. So I'm going to turn the light back on here. Oh, this right here? Like I said, this is a vermicompost bin. There's worms in there. So what I do is I'm going to take those vegetables that I just showed you in the bag. I make them into a slurry with water and then I'll put them down here. This is cut off on the bottom. So it goes, well it's not cut off. It's got holes in the bottom of this one. Um, so it'll water the plants and then the wormies can come in there and eat the food and usually I have a lid on this but I was just about to do that so I took the lid off and I don't remember where I put it so these are <laughs> I think onions I want to say they're my Walla Walla onions but I wouldn't quote me on that and it looks like it's going to definitely be next in my um see I don't know if it's the fungus gnats doing this. I really don't see any gnats in there. So I'm not really... Oh, by the way... Yes, that's that's definitely... Um, that is garlic. <laughs> not, not onion. <laughs> so, yeah. See, here's another little one. They're just kind of laying over here. They were outside, and I brought them in. I thought maybe they were just getting too hot or something. I don't know what's going on. But um, today's watering day, so that's what we're doing. This area over here used to be where I had my plants. The seedlings that, you know, I had my grow lights on. There's grow lights. And um, I changed that out. I took the old one that I had been using for the plants. I took the plants off first. And I put it outside. You'll see that in a minute. Um, this is the fungus gnat issue that I'm dealing with. Look at that. All fungus gnats. And that's only been up there for three days. So I'm at a loss as to what to do. Look at this one. Look at that. Those are all dead gnats on the side. This is my, um, I had a mystery pack of seeds, lettuce seeds, and I put them all in there, so, um, I've got one lettuce growing still. I ate the rest. Um, I do cut and come again, so I've cut the other ones to the point where they just had no flavor the last time I was cutting them, so I pulled them out. Um, but that one I still left. That one, by its yellowing, I'm guessing is getting towards the end of its life. So I'll probably make a salad the next day or two and eat him as well. Because that's what I do with vegetables. I eat them. Uh, there's a something growing here. I don't know what that is. Who knows. Um, if anybody can tell me what these are, they're not lettuce. So I, I have no idea. They were the same things that grew up in this bin when I had a lid on it. And I... Um, they all died, whatever they were. Once I exposed them to light, they died. Isn't that the craziest thing? 
but we'll discuss that in a minute. Um, but anyways, as I was saying, I've made this into my canning center. Um, I've got my vacuum sealer there. I do have a can of water there. I mean, a, a container of water there. I do not use that water for canning for the simple fact that that's alkaline water. So, um, I'd really rather drink it than can with it. So, those are what's left of my half gallon jars. I've got my little canning kit back there. Um, what I am missing with that handheld vacuum sealer, I have another um, set and another vacuum sealer. But the other vacuum sealer had the um, the accessories for wide mouth and regular mouth cans. And I cannot find that part. So I cannot do my cans right now. I can just do the bags. Which is great considering my food sealer, vacuum sealer, died. Um, here's the little monkey llama. Monkey llama, monkey llama, what does you say? Monkey llama, monkey llama. That's why I have grown in my garden. Um, some people have rocks. No, I have monkey llama. Uh, <laughs> this crazy thing um, is actually like a Pez dispenser, but you put candy in its head and it poops out the candy right there. Is that not the most disgusting thing on the face of the earth? So I don't put candy in this. It came with candy in it. Um, these horrible things were given to my children by one of the families here in the complex. And there was a set of six of them. So, um, I don't know where the rest of them are. I've only got three. Well, that's because the llama body's missing and the monkey head's missing. And the monkey head's probably on llama's body. Who knows? Who knows in my house? I never know. So, this, again, I took the light off of it because... It made it really weird to try and record with. Um, my little dog, like I said, this is another vermicompost pile uh, bin. So that's what this is. And it needs to be fed. I put the, um, I have a funnel, a special funnel I use. <clears throat> and now you see why I haven't been recording in the past few days. I've been losing my voice. And so what I do is I, after I make the veggie slurry I will put a funnel down there and put it in there now that one has got the bottom cut off um this I did not grow this <laughs> whatever was growing in there has died it's right there whatever that green thing is um these little shoots of grass are actually from the hamster cage that I emptied out and put into my <clears throat> potting mix. Um, well, apparently the organic hamster food decided it wanted to grow. So now I have these little whatever they are, and I had some corn that I uprooted out of a bunch of stuff, like my um, Missoula mustards. So, I'm going to have to get in here and pull them out. I believe that's another Santa Fe pepper. Um, not sure what this is, but obviously it needs to get out of there and get into the regular bin. I didn't really want to put too much in this bin because I'm hoping to clear it out soon. That is actually a Japanese red streak mustard. A giant Japanese mustard, that's what it is. There is one of my Missoula Red Mustards. That's a volunteer that grew up that looks like a pepper. Who knows? Another pepper-looking thing. And another weed. Uh, <laughs> and another weed. And another weed. This looks like another one of my peppers. Um... So I'm just taking those out because I don't want them. Uh, well, that was a tomato. This is what fungus gnats do to your plants. 
they suck the roots and kill your little seedlings. Which looks like what happened here. Yep. Another one. <sighs> so, the diatomaceous earth is obviously not working very well. Um, oh, you know what? There's no diatomaceous earth in this one. Well, we have to remedy that situation. That looks like another pepper growing up there. Another mustard. And there's... I just replaced all the vinegars in here. So... Ugh. It's driving me crazy. There's some more. This one... Looks like another one of my Santa Fe's. So I guess I didn't kill them all. Because I only planted like seven or eight of them. This is corn. See? <laughs> oh, goodness. Now the little ones have diatomaceous earth in them. There's something growing in there. I'll just leave it and see what it is. There we go. Oh. Well, that's empty. So, yeah. And the worms crawl up in there. <laughs> so now I have to take the worms and put them back down here. Because I don't want worms in there. I just put like 50 more worms in here the other day from a, pot, a plant that I had emptied out. Um, my potato plants, actually. Um, and all the potatoes that I harvested... We're brown in the middle, and the bottom was full, even though it had plenty of drain holes, all the bottom of my potato plants were sitting in um, really wet, ultra-rich soil, which would usually be a great thing unless you're a potato that doesn't like wet feet. Um, so the potatoes grew, and they grew into a great size. However, they were all brown when I went to cut them and use them on the inside. So... That's that. This is just my extra bin of um, soil. That's potting soil mixed with my um, homegrown uh, whoops. Sorry. There you go, little guy. My homegrown um, compost. Which also has worms in it. So I literally had to filter out the stuff that I had, the um, compost. I used a screen and um, I tried to record it, but recording with one hand and trying to get everything done with another was just, it just wasn't happening. So <laughs> this is diatomaceous earth after it's gotten wet. Now I have not wet this pile. This is all the potato, um, the soil from the potatoes, and it was already so wet, I just put some diatomaceous earth on it to try and keep the, um, oh, what is that? You see that? What is that? I don't know what it is, but when I, uh, I've got two other bins with them in there, and this, it must have crawled up. I've got whatever that is, I've got in there. Um, and I also have in this bin right here. And I thought there were millipedes, but I'm guessing not. Um, I guess millipedes sting. I'll have to do some research on that. Where did it go? Ugh. So horrible. Anyways, more fungus gnats. Gonna have to get the diatomaceous earth out again. There's a worm cocoon dig that out of there. Now there's a difference between worm cocoons and fungus gnat eggs. That is a worm cocoon. You see how it's not translucent? I think that one's already hatched. But um, let's see, I was digging in here to see if I could find the difference. You see how that one is more translucent and kind of see-through? Yeah, that's a fungus gnat egg. That's what I do about that. 
I have to dig through my stuff a lot and oh there's another worm come on little guy the reason I want all the worms out of here um, is because I'm about to drench this with boiling hot water so <laughs> good reason to want them out of there that's a really moist piece of hamster bedding um, I want to let them dry out first however so that's why I'm just covering it with the diatomaceous earth till it dries out So, I think I've played enough with this bin now. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. This right here is one of the bulbs that I got um, from the bulb mix that I rescued from Walmart. And it's literally... The little guys that grew out of it just never did right. Um, they just kind of flopped over and... I don't know if this will come back to life. So, I just kind of put it to the side there. But yeah, look at all that. So, obviously the diatomaceous earth is not affecting them. That's just a piece of, um, like the egg crates sometimes. Or these actually was apples. This was apple crate. Um, and I use that to fill some of my bins with. Because I have quite a few. <laughs> I only buy eggs in the cardboard containers. See, one of those little boogers just got me. They sting, whatever they are. Those little multi leg things. Uh-oh, I just saw a worm. <sighs> Jeez. Nope, that's not him. Oh well, we're going to stop playing with this bin now. <laughs> now that my hands are all gross and dirty. These are some more of my Japanese giant um, mustards. These are some more of whatever those are. They kind of volunteered to come up in here. Um, there's another mystery something. <sighs> no idea. Oh, look. I just beheaded it. Oh my goodness. Oh, how horrible. I'm such a horrible person. I beheaded the fake flamingo. That doesn't matter. It'll still sing with its head off. As you can see, that is my Twinkie dog's favorite. He likes to eat its beak, so I have to keep him out of it. Yeah, he, he knows I'm talking about him. Look at him. He heard it. Watch this. <laughs> Where's it at, Bubba? Where's it at? He's like, I want it. I want that flamingo. It makes me so mad. Okay, this is another one of those, um, I think they're dahlias, that was growing in the other, the vermicompost bin. I just took it out because it was getting big and it didn't, or it wasn't getting big. So once I put it over here, you see it stalks nice and thick. And I need to put some more diatomaceous earth on this. What I need to do with this is take the um, sides down and staple them because they won't stay down. And that's just a four foot, <laughs> a four foot um, bamboo pole. You see those? That's because I actually had one of the fly traps wrapped around it. So it's sticky there and they keep getting stuck. So yeah, that brings me great amusement in my life. Okay, so this for Miss Kiki Soto is my teepee. Yeah. And I did this way before she posted something about trellising. And um, I asked her about trellises inside. Um, and she suggested a teepee. Well, I had already done this interesting contraption here. Um... And I've got one of the big ones just leaning against it. I've got extra um, yarn here to put over here. Um, I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. 
This one's kind of just laying there, just laying down on the job. That one's small, but it is getting a little bigger. Um, this again is for my watering. There are no worms in this. There's been. So this one is just for watering. It's got holes in there, and I'll just water it. Um, what I'll probably water this one with is my fish emulsion water. And then I'll um, cover it up with some soil. I had a lid to it, but <clears throat> somebody got a hold of it. <laughs> and he ate it. This is my material eggplants, and they need to go in a different container, which is what that soil is for. But I don't want to put it in there just yet because of all the issues that I'm having with the um, fungus gnats and whatever that creepy crawly thing is in there. These are my Bolero Dwarf Marigolds and it looks like they need a new container. They're next to be watered. This is my mystery plant. Um, no idea. <laughs> I have mystery plants that just pop up places. They just volunteer to come and say hello. And um, when I see them and they're getting too crowded, like in small containers or in a spot I don't want them in, I put them in these, and when I'm ready to plant them, I'll just cut, I'll just cut the bottoms off, so it's not a big deal. But those need to go in the watering, too. Let me see. This, again, this is why you label things. Um, I believe this is a patty pan squash. Um, this little container might not be big enough for him, but for right now it's okay. These are my <laughs> nasturtiums, and they need to be watered. Everything gets watered today. Everything gets watered pretty much um, at least spritzed every day. This is my German thyme, and I've already trimmed this back like twice, but I see there's some more woodiness there. So I had him over here with this direct sunlight, but um, it kind of got burnt, so I put him back. <laughs> uh, another mystery. Let me see. That's not a loofah gourd, I'll tell you that much. Um, I'm not sure what that says. It's just stuff that volunteered to, to grow. <laughs> so I figured if it wanted to grow, I was going to give it a chance. Um, I'm not sure. I think this might be a tomato. Um, it was a volunteer. Anything that's not labeled is because it was a volunteer.